Hi guys, I'm back. <laughs> Happy Friday. I hope everybody's been having a great day. So today we're going to have Miss Hannah Carly, Miss Alaska. She's actually on the road to Miss USA, so I'm really grateful that she had the time to be here with us today. Um, she's really awesome and I can't wait to... Oh, she just turned in. Awesome. So let's add her right now. Hello! Oh my gosh, you look so beautiful. Hi, hi, <laughs> you, you are as well. Oh, can you awesome. see me well? Sometimes my Wi-Fi is a bit weird. Can hey, yeah, I can see you. You look so awesome. You're wearing your sash and everything. <laughs> oh yes, I, I am wearing my sash. <laughs> oh my god, so cute. I love that. Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm good. It's cold here. I'm in Maine right now, actually, so it's actually pretty cold right now. Oh, yeah. The East Coast is really chilly. Everywhere. Yeah. So I'm just kind of like, you know, I'm sitting in like a big jacket. I'm just kind of like, it's kind of gloomy outside. And I'm just kind of, yeah, I've just been going through my day. So, um, what? So let's start off with D. So I want to kind of like let people know, like, obviously, you're Miss Alaska. We presented that. <laughs> Miss Alaska, <laughs> but, USA. Miss Alaska, There's like. USA. Yeah, there's a lot of pageants, but I'm going to Miss USA, which is the preliminaries for Miss Universe. That's so awesome. That's intense. So I'm def I definitely <laughs> have a lot of questions about that. But before that, I want to like have people get to know you a little bit. So if like you could give yeah. like, a little bit of background about you, maybe like about where you grew up, or like you know like um just like a little, a little story about you, like just about you. Yeah, I, I mean, there are a lot of stories we can share about ourselves, but I guess when I'm thinking about like where I am today versus where I started, there are some drastic differences. Um, I'm from a very large family, actually. I'm one of nine, and um, it's, it's a bit of a complex blended family. My, there are many fathers in my family, and um, well, essentially, me and my siblings were all happy and hunky-dory until my mom died when I was 12 years old, and then we split up across the U.S. to either our different dads, to live with either our different dads or um, to be wards of the state for some siblings, which there were some switch around, some siblings got adopted by other siblings' dads and whatnot, so it was a bit of a complex story. At times, you know, I felt more like a parent than a sister, um, especially because I was the oldest daughter. So. Um, that's kind of how things started, was a big mix-up. That's actually how I got to Alaska, actually. That's how I became an Alaskan resident, is after my mom died. Um, I was actually living in Georgia with my mom, and after she died, I was I was visiting my dad in Alaska when it happened, and I I had nowhere to go back to because, she, well, my, my mom was gone, and so there was no one to go back to in Georgia. So I stayed in Alaska, and, you know, I think that's kind of a testament of how I really believe that in the saying that, you know, people say beauty, um, beauty from ashes. I ended up in Alaska be because of the death of one of my parents, but it became so much my home that even today I'm representing Alaska at Miss USA. I mean, the competition has already started. I, I did my interview like two days ago. So um, so right now I'm representing my home state, Alaska at Miss USA, and how I got there was a bit more of a tragic story from the beginning, but where I am today is, is as a result of that tragedy, something beautiful. Awesome. So nine siblings. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. It is. Yeah. You're the oldest. I'm the I'm the oldest girl of my blood related siblings. We have kind of a blended plant family. So there are some siblings that are half blood related, whole blood, and then some siblings that are um, through marriage. But I'm the oldest daughter of my blood related siblings. So that's kind of why I felt like a mom growing up sometimes is because. They needed the, I mean, I'll be honest. Um, my younger sisters, they have a different dad than me, so when, right when my mom died for a few years, I was in a house of only men. It is a wonder that I won the Celeste USA. I did not even know how to do eyeshadow until last year. Like, like I didn't even know how to do eyeshadow until I won the Alaska USA. I was like, oh man, I better practice. Let's find some skin colored ones so it's easier, you know? <laughs> um, I grew up in a house of men and we were just hunting, four wheeling, fishing gutting our moose like that's kind of the <laughs> life we grew up we literally lived in the woods and so uh, just because of that there was no female influence but in order to have kind of a healthy family balance there there needed to be and that's kind of where I felt like the mom at some points is because I was the oldest um, daughter so I kind of took on that role where needed and then later my dad adopted my half sister and she needed a motherly figure and you know that was a bit messy for a while to be honest um, 
uh, a sister, being a mom, that that's really messy. It's kind of the dynamic you have to work with when you have um, you know, when you have family deaths and whatnot. Things can get really messy, especially when you have a blended family or a complex family situation. But um, now she's my best friend, and I think those hard times together up in the Arctic really did bond us. Even though it started out a little bit rough with me having to talk to her teachers when she didn't do her homework. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. So, like, fast forward, you graduated from Columbia. Well, actually, so it's kind of funny. I just finished my graduate degree at Vanderbilt University, and I got to, during my graduate degree, I was selected for an elite fellowship at Columbia University. So that's like, while you're in graduate school, um, Columbia University picks students from around the U.S. We only picked two from my university, and I was one of the ones that they picked. And I got to be in this like interdisciplinary fellowship where I was learning with students from Harvard, Yale, Columbia, and we were all working together on solving, actually we are working on solving education issues in the U.S. about, we are working a lot about the inequality and inequity of education in the U.S., and, which is really a huge passion of mine because I feel that there's a lot of communities that don't receive adequate education. So yes, I did just finish that. <laughs> That's so awesome. It's so crazy. Like you came from kind of like a crazy beginning and then you got to i mean you're miss alaska you you know vander i mean vanderbilt is just as awesome <laughs> vanderbilt oh, thank you that's so awesome and it's so awesome that you were able to like still build that relationship with your half sister and you guys mm -hmm. so close um what would you say I mean, you're at this point now where you're like literally two weeks out from Miss USA. Like I can't even, I'm sure it feels like super surreal. Are you nervous at all or? Well, I mean, I'll be honest, before Miss Alaska USA, I didn't really know how to walk in heels. I've been practicing, <laughs> but um, because of COVID, I haven't really had the events to go out and practice wearing my heels and whatnot. So, I mean, we'll see how I do when we get to the stage. <laughs> I think it's awesome. Like I love, I love this. I love it. Oh, You're like, I'm a, I'm a woodsy girl that's got that loves some glam. So we're just gonna put the two together and see how it goes. I mean, I'm totally there with you. I'm the only girl out of all my cousins and like I'm my brothers, etc. So I grew up with boys. So like I always, I grew up like playing around with guys and stuff. And it wasn't until later on that I actually started liking makeup and stuff. So, uh, but I always think it's fun. I think it's a good thing because you have like a good balance, you know, like you yeah. can feel like really beautiful gorgeous glammed up and also you can go hunting <laughs> like, yeah. yes that is true we do have a very subsistence lifestyle in alaska so i do think both is good yeah so um so with everything going on i mean i know you know you shared obviously unfortunately your mom passed away like early on and everything about your family kind of being split up um was there something that you kind of like struggled with that you learned to kind of deal with like did you struggle with anything during that time and like now that you're here like you reflect on it and you're like wow I can't believe I got through that yes well I mean in all honesty when you go through something like one a parent passing two siblings getting separated across the entire United States and you yourself moving all the way from the southeast up to the Arctic and Alaska there's going to be a lot of things that are internal struggles during that and um, I would say these are things that I probably don't talk about that much with people. I, I don't know if I've ever mentioned it to other people much really at all ever, but there were some struggles for me during that time. I mean, in particular, that's a lot of stress to put on a young teenage girl to feel like I need to become the mom of a family. And to some degree, it's what, it's like there was no other option because it, my dad was having a lot of stress as well during that time and and it, it was a huge change for everybody so everybody had to step up to the plate and um i'll just be honest i i did struggle with some very depressed thoughts and even at times um i would say that it felt like life had was very pointless because it didn't seem like anything was going in the right direction and and you know it's kind of strange actually i posted on my um on my instagram page about uh suicide awareness because um that's something that a lot of alaskans struggle with there's a lot of suicide there's hardly anybody in alaska that doesn't know somebody who's been directly affected with suicide and um you know i think the way that suicide looks like is it's not necessarily you look sad. I don't think I looked sad all the time. It's sometimes it's more so just a feeling of not 
having feeling, a feel a, a choice to not feel anything at all so that you don't feel the pain. And I think that for a while I was in that spot because um, I honestly I had plans. There were things I wanted to do. And then um, I like I, I was I actually wanted to go become a missionary. I thought that sounded awesome. I was really encouraged about this. And then um, my dad adopted my half sister, which I'm thankful for. But during that time, he got in a depression and he um, he couldn't necessarily do everything that she needed to do. And I honestly like I felt like I felt a responsibility to stay back in Alaska and just be there for my sister. That's when I kind of ended up really taking on a huge motherly role. And I was mm -hmm. definitely not planning on it at the time. And it, it was something that probably wasn't my responsibility, but somebody had to do it and it just fell in my plate. And I was also, I decided, you know, I might as well um, try and go to school. I actually, I didn't know anything about university at the time. I, when I graduated, I found out, oh, I need to take the SAT. And, and I, um, I happened to be in of my high school because um, I also have a belief that whatever you're working, whatever you do, do it to the best of your ability because you never know if somehow it's going to lead to somewhere good. So it just so happened that I was a valedictorian, so I had some scholarships to go to college. So at that same time when I was learning how to be a mom, sort of, of my yeah. sister, um, <laughs> I was also going to college full time and I was working for my family's business because my family's business was really struggling. And, and honestly, like, I'm gonna be honest, I think I made like, I think I made like 15, maybe $20 a day. It took me, it, pay, it cost I think 10 to $15 a day to pay for gas. And I had oh. to buy me and my sister food. Literally every single day for probably six months, we ate, uh, we ate rye, white rice with rotisserie chicken and sometimes teriyaki sauce because all I could afford was my like $5 a day. And um, my, my dad was just really depressed and he didn't necessarily see that we were struggling in ourselves. And, and I was a kid, I didn't really know how to express to him that like, hey, you seem down and out, dad, can you help me out too? You know, I didn't really get all of that. So just during that time, I started to feel like my plans, there was no hope for my plans. There was nothing, mm -hmm. like I didn't have plans anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think during that time is, um, it was the first time that I remember thinking about like, does life even matter? And I think, um, you know, I think if I didn't have, um, if I didn't hear from God during that time, I think I could have really struggled a lot more with suicidal thoughts. Um, because I definitely did struggle with the thoughts of does life really even matter? Is there even like a point to caring? Is there a point to wanting anything if all of it just ends up like this if your parents die you and your siblings get spread across the country and you have to live on five dollars a day for food for you and your sister like i don't know to me it just kind of it didn't seem like life was going that great and i and i honestly wondered if it mattered at all during mm -hmm. that time but um i remember i was in my room once and i was praying to god and i kind of felt bad for feeling that way honestly because i know i hear people say like god is good and god has plans for you and, and during that time i was like okay well i've heard these things but i really don't feel it um but finally i felt it was okay, honest with myself and i and i felt it was okay to be honest with god and i told god that i was not I was not feeling good about um, the fact that my mom was gone, about the fact that I felt like I had to take on a little bit of a motherly role in my family, about the fact that I had to, that all my plans canceled and that nothing seems to be going right and all my siblings are struggling and we're split across the entire United States. And, um, and, and the fact that any plans that I had, I didn't think were going to work out because it just didn't seem like there was any possibility for that to happen in the situation. It didn't seem like any of my dreams could really happen. Um, but in that time, I just remember feeling like, I remember feeling like when I was praying, I felt like God say to my heart, like I really felt in my heart something say that there is always hope. And I didn't know why or how hope could look like in that situation, but I held on to that. I actually had like a little um, wooden piece. I think I found that like a Dollar Tree or maybe it was like a like a, you know, one of those secondhand stores, yeah. like a Salvation Army, something yeah. like that. It was really cheap, but it said hope. And it was like a little wooden piece. And I just like kept that on my, my um, on my desk for a really long time, just that whole year. I really struggling with trying to figure out what kind of person I was going to be, how my adult life was going to go and how my family was going to be okay and healthy. And I just remember thinking like the same thing that I just felt in my heart when I was praying, when I was 
when I was finally honest with God about how I thought life was really hard, life was a struggle, I didn't know how me and my siblings were going to make it, I wasn't happy about the fact that we were split across the U.S., that my mom died, that I'm having to learn how to be a mom at 18 to my younger siblings, like, that, that didn't feel good, And but in that moment when I was honest, I felt God tell me, there is always hope. I didn't know what that looked like. But in, but that's how that's how life is a lot of the times in the aftermath you can see it like you know everybody says hindsight twenty hindsight's twenty twenty and the moment your vision's really tainted in the moment I did not think that anything that's happening today could have been possible I would not have expected that you know me moving up to Alaska because of the death of my mom could have led to me representing my state as Miss Alaska. USA, I wouldn't have expected that honor. I wouldn't have expected that, you know, me starting university because I decided to stay in Alaska to take care of my sister instead of going um, to do other things. I wouldn't have expected that that could have led to me actually going to my dream school, Columbia University on full ride scholarship. These are things that I wouldn't have expected. And it was, and they all started in that time of my life where I felt like there was meaninglessness, where there was, well, I really felt like like there was no hope but i just kept listening to this voice inside that i believe was god saying that there is always hope i didn't understand how i didn't know what hope looked like but i decided to believe it and every time i kid you not i don't know how many times i told myself i just almost chanted i probably looked like a monk or something <laughs> there is always hope like there is always hope and i do see now in the aftermath how god took my my um honestly my terrible situation and he turned it into something so beautiful because I chose to believe that he is somehow providing hope and that there is always a way and I didn't know what that way was but I would say probably what's been like from where I was to where I am now is probably better than I could have imagined honestly so I think God's way is always better than our way and I wouldn't have expected the blessings that have come along the path that the, the path that started in a very trying time, um, but that trying path has ended into a, a beautiful path. And, and you know, I think that's how trials work is they, if you, if you give, if you give them to God, he makes them into something beautiful. He really does. But um, I think the most important part during that time was that I learned that there's always hope. Uh, that's, that's awesome. I almost have like no words. Like the, I, you're, it's so crazy because you look at people and you can't even think like you're like ah you know she's got it all together like you know like <laughs> obviously you're Miss Alaska you went graduated from Columbia Vanderbilt you know all these things you would never imagine that you've gone through all these things you know and I think that there's also a great lesson for a lot of people you know you don't know what people are going through you don't know what they've gone through um, but at the end of the day the only thing that matters is that you give your all and that you do give your problems to God and that he will take care of them you know like thank god like you're a beautiful person inside and out you know like everything that happened into your life was to make you this beautiful person that you are now and everything has given you so much more firepower and so much more strength and um like i'm like so honored that you shared that with us today something that i was thinking about with what you were saying though and i was about to say it but then my phone messed up but um, something that you were saying really made me think about how, like, the trials that we experience, they do create our success story. And they, they also, they also create, like, not create, but they also help the success stories of others. Because all of our trials are part of what makes us who we are today. And it's through trials that we can become stronger. And the stronger person you you are, the harder you can fight for your own dreams. So I, I would say that it is the people who have experienced a lot of trials that have the ability to fight for what they care about in life most, and they can help others do the same. So I think our, our experiences do lead to our success story, especially our trying experiences. I agree 1000%. They always say it in like all the self-help books. I read like, I have like a million, different self-help, psychology, et cetera. And it all comes down to like the same thing. Like the most successful people have failed the most, you know, mm -hmm. like they have gone through hardships. It's not about, um, what is this? I just read this quote. I'm not going to say that guy's name because I can't say it right, but it's the circumstances. It's not the circumstances who make the man. Um, it's not the circumstances who make, define the man. It's what he does in those circumstances that define him. Something like that. I probably yeah. tortured that really bad. It's no, but I love that. that. But I agree with that. It's not what's going on around you. It's how you 
react to everything that's going on around you, your attitude, the way that you think about it. And sometimes it's hard. I mean, I'm sure it wasn't easy to like put yourself together and like just, you know, become a mom young and try to figure everything out and working for 15, 20 dollars a day and eating the same. Like, I'm sure it wasn't easy, but it's it's probably not going to be easy. But in the end, it's worth it. And like, that's like your testimony. Like in the end, it was all worth it, even though it was like a crazy beginning. Yeah, I mean, well, in the end, the the path that my life started on in that rocky time, I've continued like um, along this path of life. Like when I started in Alaska because of my mom's death, now I'm Miss Alaska USA. I started university because my sister needed a mom, so I just stayed in town and I needed something to do. And I, I mean, well, I guess I had a little bit of like thought that maybe the university is a smart idea. so. Um, so I decided to go to university during that trying time and I wasn't, that wasn't my plan originally um, because I was going to go do mission work actually. I don't know if I ever would have gone to university after mission work, I'm not sure. But then I, I found that um, I can serve God at a university and I actually was able to reach one of my dreams and go to Columbia University even on a scholarship. So these paths that started in these very rocky areas, they actually did create beautiful, beautiful things. Um, they just started out very unbeautiful. And you know, I mean, I mean now today everything looks great. Like I'm Miss Alaska USA, I'm a graduate of Vanderbilt University, uh, and I recently finished my uh, elite fellowship at Columbia University. Everything looks great right now, but just one year ago, I was in Miss Alaska USA. One year ago, I wasn't a Vanderbilt graduate. One year ago, I didn't. Have, I have never been accepted to Columbia University. So um, you never know when things are going to turn around in your life. And I don't know if I would even use the terminology turn around because I really feel like the path that started in that rocky trying time, that path is the same path I continue to grow on. And eventually, like things, like I, I just continued in that way. I continued working hard, going to university. I continued staying close to my family and I continued believing that thing that I told you that there is always hope. And that same path, I, I just ended up finally seeing the fruit of my efforts, of my hard, my hard work in university, my hard work in just believing at times that there is hope, my hard work in, you know, just keeping the family together. So, um, you never know when things are going to start looking better, but I do believe that if you always believe that there is hope and, and I also have, like, I have like two main things, like something I believe, I always believe in something I always do. I always believe that there is always hope and I always do my hardest at everything as though I'm doing it for God. And I think with those two things, um, they have made this rocky path into something beautiful because when God enters a situation, it can't not turn out good. I've, there's a Bible verse that says, um, everything works for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So in all honesty, like that's everything. It's like, like life sucks sometimes, mm. but if you love God, somehow he has a way to make some good of it. Just like he made good of my mom's death and it bringing me to Alaska and and me starting university and just seeing where I am today, he made good of it. He kept to his word in the Bible. He kept to it. He he turned the situation around for good. And he does that for everybody who will, in my opinion, I guess, yeah. just, I guess the Bible says just love him. And, and I think also believe that there is always hope. I agree. Oh, Anna, your story was like awesome. And like I said, when you like exit <laughs> out for a minute, I was like talking like you're you're awesome like you're a beautiful person inside and out and i'm so grateful that you were willing to be open with us today because again like there's a lot of people who just don't talk about these things and i think a lot of a big problem with um because as i've shared with you i've had my struggles with mental health as well i've like been in the deep end of like wanting to actually kill myself and actually self-harming etc um, and I thought I was the only one, <laughs> but the reality is that you're not. So many people struggle with mental illness and they feel like they're crazy or they feel like they're the only one, but you're, you're they're not. And in a lot of different ways, um, I'm happy that in this stage we're getting better about that, that it's being more openly accepted that it's okay to not be okay. Um, but now that we've had like such an awesome conversation, I, I wanna close out with something 
cool. I didn't, I actually didn't ask you this before I should have. Do you like to read? Do you, I'm sure you do. So funny <laughs> thing is, I love learning. I love education. I love going to college. I hate reading. I hate it. <laughs> so, okay. So I can only make myself read if I see like, okay, this is going to teach me something. I hate pleasure reading. I hate it. Um, but if it's like, okay, I'm going to learn something from it. However, I have learned how to enjoy um, fictional books. So I never read fictional books ever because I was like, uh, I hate reading. I'm not going to, I love to learn though. So I'm not going to read unless I'm going to learn. Um, but I did get into audio books. That's been my way around it. So that now I do enjoy fictional books a little bit here and there. What's your favorite book? What's your favorite audio? So my favorite fictional book right now is The Embers and the Ashes. They are coming, have you heard of it? Oh, The Embers oh, and the Ashes? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna have to look it up. Um, it's a series. I can't remember what each one book in the series is called, but oh, there's like The Torch and The something. I can't remember. But anyway, the, look up The Embers and the Ashes and you'll see the series. Um, that's the one I'm reading right now. And that, Book, like they're gonna come out with their new one in January and I'm just like I have to get through everything <laughs> so that I know what's happening in January yeah. and it's honestly like it's so engaging it's a uh, it's like an old uh, old history times and it's all fictional about this uh, strange uh, kingdom but I can't spoil anything no, for yeah. you I don't read I like I have a book club and I read, I read all nonfiction because I agree, I have like the same thinking. Like I usually read things because I feel like I want to learn something from it and I usually don't, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm not going to learn anything. However, I have been right. try something. I will definitely pick that up. My friend reads uh, fiction, but she reads like Stephen King and I get freaked out by like these stories. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, this is like, I mean, there are some freaky stuff in it, but it's like very fictional. Yeah. So, so it's not that bad. It's like it. I, I don't do I don't do any like creepy movies or anything like that. So, th this this is a pretty easy read. What? Embers and Ashes. The Embers and Ashes. Yes, that's the book I'm reading right now. And there are, is this the third book? I don't. I can't recall. But I know there's a new one in January. No, I think I'm on the second book. I'm almost done with it, and the third one comes out in January. That's awesome. So you have some catching up to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hannah, thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. It's been an amazing learning experience for me. It's been inspirational for me, and I'm sure it's going to be inspirational for other people. Um, like I said, you're a beautiful person inside and out, and like, thank God, like God bless you. You you've done a lot, and you're at an amazing place right now, and you deserve it. Um, and we're all screaming for you for. Miss USA. <laughs> so, just Thank so you. Oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. There is an there is a Miss USA app if you if you wanted to vote. Oh, someone here said that they studied at Université Laval. I studied there too. Okay. Anyway, sorry. That's cool. <laughs> um, but yes, there's a Miss USA app if you if you want to vote for your Miss Alaska, you can. But also, Miss Florida is a very sweet girl. So, if you like Florida, then maybe. You should get your vote. <laughs> I'm in Florida right now. I'm in Maine. I don't know where. To me, the top voters. But, well, I mean, can you vote for any person? Yeah, you can vote for any person. It doesn't matter yeah. where you live, does it? Uh, well, I mean, it matters like where you have your residency as oh. to, oh no, for contestants, yeah. your residency matters, but for people who you vote for, you just vote for whoever you want. Oh, okay. So then there you go. Then it doesn't matter. I'm, yeah. I'm sure she's great. <laughs> yes, I mean, they're and honestly, all the queens are really great. They're really wonderful women. They're awesome. But anyways, I know you probably have like a lot of work to do, so I will leave you now. And again, thank you so much for being with us today. And like, I'm so appreciative of your time and you're awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so much for chatting with me today and for asking me really important questions that I think everybody should talk about every now and then. Yeah. All right, Hannah, you have a great rest of your day. Thank you as well. Okay, bye. bye.